Hey, ladies and gents, welcome back. This is going to be part one to What If Luffy Was Trained by Shanks. Now, I do have to thank Jan Sustar and Cody Jambero, Gaybread21, for giving me this idea. And let's jump right into it. Right into it. So obviously, this would very drastically change the situation of what's going on later on in their life. So... Obviously, something different is going to ha happen in order for Shanks to actually stay to train Luffy. So, the idea that I came up with, pretty much, was to have, when Shanks is leaving, Luffy is pretty much, like, screaming, like, I'm gonna become the Pirate King! And when this happens, he actually uses Conqueror's Hockey. And... Everybody is insanely surprised by this, especially Shanks, and this is where he decides that he wants to stay and help Luffy train and pretty much get stronger. Now, this I don't think would change the fighting style of Luffy, because Sh Shanks is a swordsman, but I feel Luffy wouldn't actually like pick up a sword, because that doesn't really complement his, you know, ability all too much. Like... We've seen him try to use a sword before. He can't really, like, swing it when he's using his gamu gamu, gamu gamu no powers. Like, obviously, he could be a swordsman and then just, like, offhand use, like, his rubber to, like, punch things. But, like, obviously, being a swordsman wouldn't really complement his rubber power too much. So, I'm not going to say he, like, Shanks trains Luffy to use, like, sword. I'm just going to say he, like, trains him in, like, hockey and how to use, you know, different types of hockey. So, obviously, Luffy, by the end of this, is going to be much stronger. I'm going to say Shanks trains him for about 14 years. Now, I don't... Okay, I need to figure out. How old is Luffy when this actually happens? I know he's really, like, he's not old. And he either left the island at the age of 16 or 18. I'm not sure which one. So, I'm just going to say that Luffy got trained by Shanks for eight years. That's that's what I'm going to say. So, obviously, during this time, Shanks is not only training Luffy's physical strength and techniques with his Gamu Gamu no Mi, but he's also training him on how to use observation, armament, and conquer his hockey. So, I don't really have to cover all too much of that, but when Shanks actually does end up leaving, and Luffy, I'm going to say, is about the age of 15. And he still has a few years before he's going to leave, but Shanks left and left Luffy to train on his, on his own when he left. Just because he wanted Luffy to have a really good handle over hockey before he left. Just because he was really impressed by what he saw in Luffy with having Conqueror's, or using Conqueror's hockey at such a young age. So, Luffy has pretty good control over all types of hockey, including Conqueror's at this point. So, when he, end up, when he does end up leaving... Obviously, he's going to be much stronger. So, now we have to cover what would be going on with Ace and Sabo. Because both of them would be there too. So, I feel like Ace and Sabo would both be trading with Shanks as well. So, they would pick up the same things that um, um, Luffy did. I don't know. We don't know if Sabo has Conqueror's Hockey. But we do know that Ace has used it. So he would gain control over all types of hockey. And I'm just going to say Sabo doesn't... Okay. The other two brothers do. So should I make Sabo have Conqueror's? I really don't know. I don't know, man. Okay, I'm just going to... Sure, why not? I'm going to say Sabo also has Conqueror's. So when he ends up leaving and he gets pretty much shot by that one, like, guy or the really the rich dude who like drives over with with the big boat i yeah i don't know what i'm talking about so <laughs> i do know what i'm talking about but i don't know if you know what i'm talking about so when he pretty much like you like when everybody thinks sabo dies he obviously just doesn't die he kind of just like blocks all the shots and continues sailing by because obviously sabo is a ton stronger so he doesn't really get saved by dragon and he gets off and starts to form his own like pirate crew because he wanted to become a pirate before he lost his memories and joined the revolutionaries so he pretty much he gets off the island safely and everybody knows that he's alive still so with that being the case and ace leaves ace is obviously much stronger than he was when he left in the original because now he has all three types of hockey to a 
pretty really good extent, like probably where he was in like when he left before he Okay. I'm gonna say right now, Ace is at the strength where he was during the Paramount lore, so he's really freaking strong. Obviously he doesn't have the Mara Mara Nomi, but I think it's the Mara he doesn't have the flame flame fruit. So he isn't he doesn't have that power, but he's really strong in terms of hockey and different, you know, things like that, and fighting technique, and those are much greater than what they were in the original. So, Sabo and Ace, I think, would both be training with a sword, because obviously they would not have a devil fruit to be able to affect them, and they usually fight with a pipe. <laughs> so, I feel like they would also... You know, that brings up a question, because Luffy also fought with a pipe. Why can't he... You'd think he'd be able to use a sword, kind of like the same with that. Like, swinging it around, stuff like that. So, you know what? I changed my mind. Luffy's gonna have a sword, too. Because he can use a pipe, so why couldn't he use a sword? Because they're pretty much the same thing, but more direct force. So, I'm just gonna say he can use a sword. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm scared. Scared? I don't know. So... Ace leaves, and he's good with swordsmanship, and has all three types of hockey, same with Sabo. And they're going off to pretty much get their crew. So now, when Luffy leaves, he obviously takes out the Sea King, because obviously Luffy's even stronger than he was in the original, and he easily managed to take it out in the original, so there's no point in saying that he isn't strong enough to actually do that. So now, this is where he and when he leaves, his first encounter is with Alvida, and there's really no point in covering that fight. It's not a fight, because Luffy not only has armament and observation, but he also has conquerors, and he easily managed to defeat Alvida in the original, and, like, he took, like, direct blows from her actual whatever, whatever what is it even called? Her giant frickin' mace. So, obviously, Luffy wouldn't take any damage from the sun again, and pretty much sends her flying just like he does in the original. And he still has the same moment that he has with Kobe. So, they take Kobe, and Luffy is trying to find his first members of a crew. And Kobe was talking about this really scary pirate hunter named Zoro that there is that, that was held at this nearby island there, that there is a marine base for. So, obviously, Luffy heads there because he's like, ooh, a sense for battle, and maybe he can even join my crew. So, they get there, and they go up top, and they see Zoro. So, that little girl climbs over and is about to give Zoro food, but obviously, all of the marines and Helmeppo comes, and he pretty much, like, orders the little girl to be kicked over the side. Luffy still catches her like he did in the original, and... He goes over the wall and pretty much, or he goes over the wall now and gives Zoro the food because Zoro's like, give me the food, kind of like, he's hungry, obviously, because he didn't eat for like months at this point, or weeks, I don't know how long it's been. It's been a long time since he ate, so obviously he's really freaking hungry. So now, Luffy went down to the bar and Helmeppo does the same thing that he does, and he's like, Th that's my father, and Luffy just freaking socks him in the face, sending him flying into a wall. And with this, Helmeppo is obviously very, very pissed, because he is not, he, like, he's not used to being roughed around by people, because obviously everybody's afraid that his dad's gonna beat the shit out of them. So, Helmeppo's like, uh, my dad's gonna come at me, and he runs away kind of thing. So now, Luffy goes over to Zoro once again. And when he does go over to Zoro, Zoro, he's pretty much blackmailing Zoro into getting his swords. So, Luffy goes and grabs his swords, and, or he tells, uh, he obviously tells Zoro that, pe that Helmeppo's planning on killing him, and that he, the bet that, or not the bet, but the promise that he made is pretty much off now. So, Zoro's like, oh fine, go get my swords, and he, Luffy goes and gets a sword, finds Helmeppo, and pretty much uses Helmeppo to lead him to his room. 
And Luffy, I believe, would actually be a lot smarter than he was. He wouldn't exactly be a great navigator, but he would be intelligent, because Shanks is really freaking smart. Like, he's not obviously, like, a top-tier smart person like Nico Robin or anything like that, but Shanks is smart, and you'd actually teach Luffy some intelligence things, so he wouldn't be the normal shonen protagonist that's just really dumb but punches real hard. <laughs> so, Luffy's pretty smart, so... He finds the room, grabs the swords, and is like, oh, he must just use three. So when he actually goes down and stands next to Zoro, he doesn't have to, like, take time to undo it. He unsheaths his own sword and instantly cuts down, cuts every rope there and hands Zoro his own swords. Zoro can see the confidence at which Luffy was holding the sword by and knew that he knew how to use it. He, like, pretty much not as well as Zoro, obviously, but he knew how to use the sword. So, now they begin fighting all the other, all the marines, and the captain of the, pretty much, base there. Helmeppo's father, who, yeah, he doesn't exactly like him that much. <laughs> so, they easily deal with him, and Kobe tries to join, Kobe joins the marines, just like he did in the original. Luffy and Zoro then sail away. Now, when they're sailing away, Luffy is, again, much smarter. He's not great at navigation, but he has a much better sense of direction than Zoro or him did in the original. So, they obviously go, and they're making it to this island. And when Luffy go jumps up to get that bird, he pretty much just slices his head off and grabs the thing. Like, he doesn't get, like, taken away, away to that island. So, they... He lands back on the ship, and they eat. Now, with land in sight, they sail to it, pretty much. So, they sail to this island, and this is where they meet once again with... Or, or they, Luffy meets once again, Zoro hasn't met her yet, with Nami. This is where Buggy the Clown's little headquarters thing is. So, that entire arc kind of starts, and obviously Luffy has much greater ease than he did in the original, because he can use a sword. Like, obviously that's not great for against a buggy, but Luffy can figure it out, because again, he's pretty dang smart when it comes to fighting. And he can use armament hockey, and he's probably physically stronger than Zoro at this point, just from... Okay, let's be honest here. If you're being trained by Shanks for like eight to ten years, you're gonna be really fucking strong. I'm I'm just like I'm pointing that out. So he's probably physically stronger than pretty much everybody there. So when he does get placed in that cage, because obviously he knows he can pretty much break out at any any point he wants to, when the cannon is actually about to be shot, instead of Nami or Nami doing the thing and like pretty much Sever not severing, but like grabbing the fuse so the buggy ball can't get shot at Luffy. Luffy uses his conqueror's hockey and knocks everybody there out except for Buggy and the acrobatics unicycle guy. Everybody else there is knocked out. And sh obviously, Buggy's a little bit terrified. He's like, this. That, that power, that, that power was conquerors. And then Luffy armaments up his arms and smashes straight through the little cage he was in. And he decides that, eh, now's the time he dealt, he dealt with this. He pretty much one-shots the unicycle guy to the ground. This is before Zoro can even, like, show up. So, he doesn't even get to fight. And Luffy then swings his sword at Buggy. But Buggy separates his body. Even though Luffy use, was using armament hockey, Buggy is an Elogia. He pretty much just separates his body like that. Or, like, just separates his body. So Luffy, uh, pretty much within minutes of fighting this, realizes what he has to do. He sheaths his sword once again, and he just goes for punches against Buggy. After easily dealing with Buggy, this is where Zoro shows up once again, and Nami is very, very impressed with... Luffy. She hasn't really seen anything of Zoro, but she knows that he's probably pretty strong too if Luffy was pretty much traveling with him. And Nami had a lot of intelligence of what was going on over like the Grand Line and the New World and different things like that. So she knows what hockey is. I think. 
I think she knows what hockey is. Or she's at least heard of hockey. And she saw what Luffy was doing. And he's only like 18 or 19. No, he's 7. Okay, Luffy's 19 after the time skip. So yeah, he's 17 right now. So this 17-year-old can use two types of hockey with what she saw. Because she obviously saw him use Conqueror's hockey. So she pretty much joins them. Just like she does in the original. And this is where they're heading off to see you once again so that's where i'm gonna leave this off i'll see you guys in the next part so peace out later